Ladies are from year 11. Thank you. and civil Muslim primary school. League executives, parents and guardians, uh, our media partners, uh, dear students, uh, assalamu alaikum, nisam bula vinakar, and very good morning to you all. I think Shafrin, you said a lot. Don't believe in what all she has said, okay? She just had to say it because I was here. <laughs> Anyways, um, principal, thank you very much for the invitation to be part of your Prefect Investiture Ceremony for 2018. And of course, it's always a pleasure to witness um, the, the mantle of responsibility that is uh, bestowed to young students who have been identified uh, as uh, student leaders, not only at your school, but last week uh, we had been going around the country witnessing a lot of perfect investiture ceremony and it's indeed a proud moment to see that one day you will rise up to take uh, leadership roles, uh, not only within your, your schools, uh, your organizations, but uh, towards the country as a whole. Uh, before I begin on a lighter note, students, um, if I may tell you, your college principal is a colleague of mine. We both uh, graduated from uh, Fiji College of Advanced Education in 1994. 94. And when he said, in, he, said, he said this line, he said, in times of principle, stay like a rock. I don't know what principal he meant. Principal with an L-E, English students, or principal with an A-L. But your principal had always been a man of principles. He stood like a rock during our two years at Advanced College. And from the time I've known him, I've had great respect for him, and I congratulate you, Mr. Faru, for rising to this leadership position and leading this prestigious institution towards success. So dear students, um, John C. Maxwell said, and I quote, a leader is one who knows the way, shows the way, but more importantly, leads the way. And I'm sure we are going to witness these budding leaders who are going to show how to lead um, Silver Muslim College in, uh, in, uh, by working with not only the, the students present here, but also your staff and the management of the school. To the students, those who are going to receive uh, uh, badges of leadership, uh, congratulations. It's indeed a, a momentous moment for you to receive that. I'm sure it has not come easy to you. You must have worked hard and your teachers must have really identified those leadership qualities and the potential that you have since you joined uh, this school. And of course, when you are in primary school, these potentials are also identified by teachers and you receive these badges. Uh, just a word of caution. Power is bestowed upon you, and power can also be taken away from you should you fail to perform, and that applies to me as well, okay? Anybody who's given the, the responsibility to lead, to make decisions for others, has to do it with utmost responsibility and humility. Many a times when people are given power, you start flying high, oh, I got a badge. That is my right to do what I want to do. No, it doesn't work that way, right? Whether, like I said, whether it's, whether it's my chair or whether it's your badge, it comes with a lot of, a lot of responsibility. And I'm sure those of you who are going to receive the badges, you are the right people, you are the right students for this college to, to receive those badges. So wear your badge with humility <coughs> and gratitude. I, I recall one of my secondary school teachers, I still remember his name, Mr. Singh. He, he wrote in my autograph book when he was migrating to USA, he said, he said, Rosie, keep your feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. What it basically means is, sometimes when you have power, you start flying, like I said. So always be humble in your dealings with your students. Be humble in your dealings when you make decisions for the school. And that, of course, has to come with a lot of humility and gratitude. Always be respectful to your teachers. Always be respectful to your parents. Always be respectful to your adults and seniors, not only in your homes, but also in the community as well. You and I both know a lot of issues with the younger generation today. Um, <clears throat> during one of the speakers debate, we were talking about the youth. And I'm not sure who the, who the speaker was, but he said, well, youth today are a lost cause. I, I said, no. So I had to intervene. I said, look, these youths are our hope. And I'm sure you'll agree with that. Okay? 
There are a lot of issues pertaining to youth in Fiji today, a lot of social issues that we deal on a daily basis that pertains to you. Okay? So as leaders of the college, you are there to inspire your colleagues. You are there to inspire other younger people to follow the, the path of righteousness. The badge that you are going to be given today, remember, it's not only a symbol. Oh, sorry. It's, yeah, it's not only a badge, but it's a symbol or reminder of who you represent. First, you represent yourself. You represent your family, you represent your culture, and you represent the institution who has given you the badge. It is what you will carry with determination, and that will also uh, depict the kind of leader that you aspire to become. So when you do put the badge, starting maybe in the next couple of minutes, remember the badge signifies your school. The badge signifies the teachers and the students who have placed the trust in you to uphold the rules and laws to lead with kindness, discipline and love. That's very important. You need to be disciplined yourself in order to justify the badge that will be given to you. And I've said you are agents of change. You are the hope of the nation. You are hope of the school and you are the hope of your families as well. So you may have situations where you need to adapt to changes. Be receptive, be receptive to changes. Many times when you bring about a change, there's a lot of resistance, there's a lot of criticisms. But I'm sure you will adapt to change because change is not always bad. You've got to understand that. A simple example of change would be where now you'd have to devote a certain percentage of your time towards your leadership role. Okay, many a times we come across parents who say, look, I don't want my child to, to take up this leadership role because studies are important. So if everybody started thinking about that, how will we bring about leaders in the community? So balance your role as leaders here, balance your role with your schoolwork, and balance your time when you go home and uh, carry out other activities. Um, you, you also need to keep in mind that there, will, there are students of different backgrounds here, different cultures, different traditions, different upbringings. However, you all have the same goal. And the goal is to be educated and have a successful life. Thus, it is your duty to instill that acceptance in yourself for others around you. And that is why we need you to promote multiculturalism. We need to be tolerant of all the cultures that live alongside. And I still want to the classic example of a, of a school that is promoting and instilling uh, values and views of multiculturalism. So I'm sure, as student leaders, you must at all times, or you will at all times, inculcate religious tolerance in your leadership skills. Understand those around you. That's also very important. And I'm sure you have the school teachers and the leadership team to help you understand other children better. One of the regrets I have in life is that I, I did not learn any other language apart from Fiji, Hindi, and English. That's my biggest regret in life. And it makes it so difficult, believe me. It makes it so difficult in a leadership role to understand the other cultures. And well, I think it's not too late. If somebody is willing to teach me other languages, Chinese and Ethiopian, and Japanese and French, I'm, I'm ready to go for that. But you are at a stage where you can step up, you know, and see how best you can understand others around you. Of course, we all know the basic, the basic um, everyday vernacular in relation to, so you can greet and greet each other, say hello and bye, but that's not enough. So um, <clears throat> that's something uh, I think you should look at because we are here to stay, we are here to live with each other, and we are here to live and promote a very peaceful and harmonious, harmonious society for, for Fiji. Again, to the student leaders, a leader is a servant first. And it begins with the natural feeling that one wants to serve. So if you do not have in your heart to serve your people, you don't deserve the badge and the honor that will be bestowed upon you today. So please look at yourself and see, am I the right one for the badge? And I'm sure those who are going to be inducted are the best one. To those parents who are present here today, uh, they need your guidance, they need your support in the home environment. As parents, you need to provide those things that is supposed to be provided um, uh, within the home environment, the love care, the teachings of discipline, etc., the guidance. Um, the, the positive environment that we need within the home is also very important. 
I served as a teacher for, the la for, for 23 years before joining that and, and many a times we tend to ignore what's happening in the home environment. We have expectations of our children. Why is the homework not done? Why are you tired? Why is your uniform not clean? Why are you sleeping in the classroom? So maybe we need to step up that, um, that responsibility that teachers have and see what's happening in the home environment. You might say, okay, um, so what do we do? Do we teach? Or do we go and check what's happening in the home environment? We need to balance that. The child that comes to your classroom is a unique individual. What he goes through in the home environment, you and I don't know. So maybe spare a few times to understand your children better. Why is the child not doing the homework? Why is the child malnourished? Why is the child always um, sad or lonely in the classroom? It's very important for us to know. Then only can we take the child to the maximum potential that we expect our children to be. So parents, please ensure that the, the, the home environment that you create for your children is also very positive. And uh, again, many a times we let situations control us. Situations outside are so powerful that they control our thinking. Okay? And we, we need to control situations. And this is where the parents come in and guide the children. Okay, it's all, all's going to be well. But if you leave a lot on the small shoulders of our children, can you imagine what they will do within the school environment? Again, to the teachers, thank you very much for all that you do for our children. Many at times I understand, um, like my nurses and my doctors, you also come under a lot of public criticism and scrutiny. Well, that's the type of job that we do. We deal with life and death. In our hospitals, you deal with young minds. So together, we receive a lot of, sometimes a lot of undue criticism. But then again, criticism should also be taken very positively. Okay? So if your teachers criticize you for something, take it in a positive manner. There's always some, some sort of learning when somebody criticizes you. Okay? Negatives and negatives don't go together. To the student leaders, uh, to the students, if your leaders speak out on you and say, look, this is, it is against the school rule, you're not doing it right, take it positively and, and go for improvement on that. Um, teachers, again, uh, you need to be role models to your children. You need to emulate behavior uh, and, uh, that will inspire your children. And believe in your students, believe in the goodness of every child that comes through your uh, through your classroom because you have the power to change that, that young mind and lead the child towards uh, success. So anyways, thank you very much on behalf of my ministry, on behalf of the government of the day. Thank you very much for the work that you do. And if I may just mention briefly on the part of the Fijian government, we have made and will continue to make every effort to help teachers and school management to assist our children realize their dreams through education. Um, education basically takes a big chunk of the government's budget because we believe that education is the pillar stone of, of, of success. And uh, <clears throat> ensuring that every child, regardless of his uh, background or status or ethnicity, we want every child to have access to education because education is the driving force in making Fiji's um, progress. The government uh, is providing free education from preschool to kindergarten through to primary and secondary schools and up, right up to tertiary levels. At tertiary level, for those of you who are going to graduate this year, um, may I take this op opportunity to wish you every success. May you score high marks because you have, you have to secure a top of scholarship which will of course take away a lot of financial burden from your parents. If you ask your teachers and if you ask your parents, when we were in schools, our parents had to fork out a lot of money to send us to school. Starting from, um, I remember, library fees, textbook fees, sports fees, lab fees, you name, name, any fees that you can name, we used to pay. Okay? So now we as a government are trying to ensure that we take away that financial burden off your parents' uh, parent shoulders and uh, <clears throat> for that you will need to succeed. For the top of scholarship, I'm sure your careers teacher, teachers will uh, advise you more on that. And uh, others, uh, if you cannot secure a top of scholarship, of course, you have the TELS uh, scheme to assist you. So while we are doing um, our, our part, we also need parents and, uh, and students to, to step up and do what is uh, expected of you. The government continues to review and reform education curriculum to ensure that our children receive high standards of education and of course you know with that you have the power to change your destiny of course you have the power to change your family's destiny and of course the country the school uh, ladies and gentlemen and students is much of a place of social learning as academic learning 
And uh, again, what happens within the classroom, what happens, you have something called a hid hidden, um, I remember this, how do you remember, eh? hidden agenda, hidden <laughs> curriculum. Well, there's something called a hidden curriculum that happens along the corridors of the school. Most of the time we think that learning only takes within the four walls of the classroom. But there's a lot of agenda, there's a lot of learning that happens within the vicinity of the school. Your relationship with your students, the learnings that you get, the cultural values that you adapt uh, while you're in the school, that is also important. And uh, well, finally, if I don't say this, I will fail as a health minister. Your health is also very important. Uh, I knew that. I knew you were going to smile like that. Okay? I've always said that we want young people to be champions of healthy living. So I was at um, some of the primary school last week. And I was asking all these little kids who were coming up, little, little boys and girls coming up for the veggies. I said, so what's your favorite food? And believe me, most of them said pizza and fish and chips. So I was not very happy. A few of them said bindi bean and all those stuff. You are educated. You know what is right. I know in this modern day and age, um, I want to use the word, but I can't use. The video is not here. Um, you know how it's very... Sort of fancy, let me use the word fancy to eat pizza and eat burgers and eat fish and chips and chicken and chips and all those things. But let us go back to our traditional foods. Okay, our traditional foods are very healthy, they are very rich in nutrients. Just for your information, I'd like to say that Fiji in the Pacific ranks very highly in terms of NCDs. When I was little, I would know my grandfather would have diabetes, my grandmother would have high blood pressure. But go home, check out the age of probably your family members and who's suffering from what. The age is coming down. Right? So at one time you say, oh, the older people will die of NCDs. No, 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 no. We are losing a lot of young people. We're losing people in their productive years of life. And that's what NCD, NCD does. It kills people. And that's a reality. So please be mindful of your health. Be, be champions of healthy eating. Um, I'm sure um, if I come and check your school canteen, according to the school, uh, the canteen policy, Mr. Principal, I would, I would see that the policy is being implemented. I know there are challenges implement, uh, implementing the, um, the canteen policy, but I'm sure you have creative teachers here, your creative home teachers and your, <laughs> your canteen teachers. You are going to prepare and serve our children with very, very healthy and nutritious meals. Okay, children, go for that, okay? And uh, on that, so please, uh, like I said, let's encourage each one of us to become champions of, of uh, health, health. And the final thing that normally bugs me is the impact of technology on, on young minds. Okay? We are told that uh, <coughs> the number of smartphones we have in Fiji is way, way above our population. So basically, people carry two phones, three phones. Well, that's all good. We need to be connected. We need to be connected with ourselves. We need to be connected to the rest of the world. But please ensure that technology doesn't come in your way, especially your study times. Use of social media. Time and again, we, we try to caution, especially the younger generations, to protect their privacy. Please protect your privacy when you are on social media. You don't have to tell the rest of the world you are out picnicking somewhere. You don't have to tell the rest of the world I'm still awake at 2 a.m. Isn't it? 2 a.m. I'm still away. Oh, sorry, I'm not on Facebook or I'm not on any social media, but that's what I get told. And this is mostly from parents. I mean, I'm a parent myself, though I have two grown-up children, but still a parent. Everything that you do, one selfie, <coughs> eating burger. <laughs> Don't do that. I have a selfie doing, okay, fine. I know it appeals to you. Okay, fair enough. You do a new hairstyle, you buy a new shoe, driving a new car and stuff. That's all good. But you've got to understand They've got to understand how your privacy is compromised when you tell the rest of the world where you are and what you do. Get that? These days at dinner table, what happens? Everybody's sitting here with the phone, right? The food is there. If you do it together, what are you doing? Everybody's there. <laughs> Somebody is snapping what they're eating. Somebody is chatting. What happens to the food? Come on. You've got to eat that food. So healthy. Well, even if it's not healthy, you've got to eat that. <laughs> so please limit your time. Prioritize your time. Okay, that time could be used for some productive homework or researching, and use 
internet for researching and so don't abuse abuse that but let me share this it's very hard to get the family together right yes how many of you have time to sit and eat breakfast together every morning not me all of you wow very good no okay even even getting a meal together with the family is becoming a problem now. You know why? Because we are so fast. Right? Everybody is committed. Your mom goes to work, your dad goes to work, you come to school. So we are just sort of fragmented. Go home and make a rule. At least one meal. That is the most important meal and that's what? Breakfast. Hmm? <laughs> See? Teachers teach them breakfast is very important. Not dinner. Dinner you eat and sleep. No good. Okay? So please go home, have a say in what your mom cooks. Have a say in what your dad brings to the market. Well, dads don't have to go to the market. Moms can go to the market as well, OK? You can go to the market as well. Choose what you want to have for breakfast. You want bean today. You want this today. So have a say in your health. That's very important. So make a rule. One meal, everybody is going to sit and have at the table, and no phones, eh? No phones. I know it's very hard. but. It's my job to tell you whether you listen or not. So we'll leave it at that. Um, so thank you very much once again, and congratulations to all those who will be inducted today. For those that have missed out, remember there's always next year. And uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. So thank you very much, and God bless. Responsibilities on us. Aid leadership at all times. Aid leadership at all times. 